All right, bros, it's about to get real here. Um, I haven't done this yet. Scott tells me I can do this, uh, and it's dry ice washing. So we'll call it dry ice cleaning the car. So I'm going to use the dry ice. Got the ICS, the Evo machine, the ICO 22, IC 22 Evo. Is that what we call this thing? The um, so the Evo is the little guy. This is the little detailing machine. I've got 390 pounds of dry ice right here in the in the tote which I'm gonna have on tap here at all times, at least most of the time. So I'm gonna have them come once a month. And um, um, you know, the idea here is that uh, I'm gonna be able to wash the car. My guess is it's gonna take a lot longer because Scott's, Scott's um, washing process is quite a bit uh, less uh, involved than mine is. And so I kinda wanna see how this goes, see if this is something that's practical and reasonable um, that maybe I do it every once in a while because I get a little better clean. Uh, but we'll see. Let's turn this sucker around. And so I'm going to have an ugly, big, ugly tote like this all the time, which I don't love. And then I'm going to take, so my machine is grounded because I don't want to get nuked again. So we're going to have to figure out some sort of grounding, a better grounding solution for this thing if I was going to, if I'm going to use it all the time. Get my ice. Got my scooper. A cardboard cover here. Oh yeah. Pop it up. So this is pelletized dry ice. Comes from air gas. I'm fill up our machine here. I like having this big, big thing because then I don't feel like I'm. Uh, I have to ration it. I can go for it. Now, I don't have the right air compressor for this application. I do have a proper air compressor next door, but we're moving out of here shortly. But I'm going to a car show tomorrow. The car has been driven this week in the rain and stuff, so it's got bugs and it's, you know, it's dirty for my level of dirty anyway. And uh, I want to clean the thing up. Here. So I'm going to do the wheels first, which is what we would normally do when we're washing. i got to get some air. I'm going to give this thing some air. So there's no electric, just air, and so I'm only delivering it like 12 CFM or something like that. Let me go check my regulator and see where I'm at. Make sure I got this thing cranked all the way up. So this is only a three horse rotary screw. I'm gonna work it as hard as it could possibly work. The, the compressor next door I have is a uh, big boy. It's a 30 CFM machine. Let's turn our flashlight on. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. idea of doing this on a periodic basis. So theoretically doing this is going to kind of restore and clean up, but it's still going to leave some like some residual dust left behind that I'm still going to have to wipe. So the question I have is, is this a practical method for cleaning regularly? fun. It's a lot of fun. So let's, let's work on the front here and see what happens to all these bugs. Now, I have this grounded to the uh, pinch weld in the car. So um, I think because this is dry, I mean, cleaning from bottom up may not be the world's worst thing. I don't know. This is my first time doing this, and I wanted to capture this on camera since we have a camera, and this is kind of what I do. It's me cool. I'm gonna clean out these grills and all that. And remember, this car is covered in PPF, so I want to be careful. With the edges.
Yeah. Another one thing I want to, I'm kind of concerning myself with, am I removing the coating on like the, the uh, on the uh, plastics? I would think not. I can get all these like areas that you normally can't get. So this is a much deeper cleaning than a normal wash for sure. fight that too hard, but you'd think that bug would come right off, wouldn't you? There we go. I just didn't have the right angle on it, that's all. I really like this for my front clip, getting it really clean. Go turn the lights off. I think this might, I mean, if you do it right, you're getting the PPF edges right direct on. I can keep my PPF edge work nice and clean. Okay, let's work around the bottom side of the car. Then we'll put the car down and work from top, top down. So let's see what we can do about all this funky stuff here. My little baby compressor's holding its own here, man. It's, it's, it's rolling. And because I have the humidity control in here, and I've got the air dryer going, you know, the refrigerated dryer. You know, I'm starting to get kind of frozen up here, but it's not uh, making some big plume like you would get if you don't have proper control of the humidity. So this is certainly not faster, I don't think, unless you're just blowing the dust off the car. But it's... Um, it's kind of rewarding to get some of these problem areas that you don't do as well with in normal washing. This is fun. Now, the question is, if you do this all the time in your garage, how, uh, how jacked up, how much dust and junk are you gonna end up with all over the place? I would think if the car is relatively clean like this, it's probably not too bad. So I'd be more inclined to do this, where I wonder if it'd be better to do this before a wash or after a wash, where I hit like like this like the little spokes where the you know the, the wheels on on the wheels or you know hitting these under parts of the car that tend to get not treated as well. And my compressor, I'm sitting there holding on to this thing. It's working fine. I don't feel like the uh, machine's starving for air at all. I probably can't leave that in the side there because it'll probably crack, I would guess. Let's keep on going, this is great. Oh, that's some oil. No wonder that wasn't coming off. One of the things that we're gonna be able to find out by doing this is how does this affect my coating? 
working around the other side of the car. How does this, how does this affect you know, detailing in general? I'm gonna figure all this stuff out by using this regularly now that I have ice coming. But if you don't keep this ground on the car, you're gonna get you know, arced the whole time. So I found this little spot right here on the pinch weld. It's perfect. And then just pinch it, just clip it right on the, right on the machine here. Like that. And we're good. Now I'm gonna wanna figure out how to like put this on a boom pole. You know, we're just getting started. Oh, yep. That's what we're afraid of. See, it lifted the PPF. This is the uh, extra piece that I have, so you gotta make sure you stay straight on. I did wanna try that and see if I could get the dirt out, and all it did was lift it up. Don't do that. I came at this way trying to get that little piece of dirt. This is my tear away piece, so there's a piece on top of a piece. It's not a big deal, but so that was a good place to test it out. Now we know. Once in a while, you keep like the little gunk from building up in the corners and stuff. I think that's where this really can come in handy. Just keeping your car neck level clean. Now let's work the top. So what we'll do, we're gonna clean this. I'm gonna grab my gray towel. And I'm gonna wipe the car and see how, how much dust is still left. Yeah, see that bug there is not coming off. Like I think, it, I would've thought they would've taken that right off. I need some more ice. Nope, still good. Shoot, this is great. Well, let's go down this side of the car since we have this. You know, remember, this is my first time doing this, like trying to wash a car with dry ice. So, just give me, cut me some slack here as I figure out what works and what doesn't. Is this practical or is it not? I think most likely this will be better. Like I'll, I'll like this for like, again, deep detailed cleaning, like once in a while, like once a month or so. I'm getting areas like the wiper blade here. And probably not so much for full, full car cleaning. We'll also ask Scott for some critique and some tips after this. How do, what are we doing wrong? How do we do this? What are some tips? I know you're supposed to go straight on, but I kind of like this going at an angle thing. I wonder if that's working. This is, 
this could, this is gonna be really good to have this for this kind of stuff. Just keeping keeping that stuff perfect. That's good. I like that. What am I doing here? So this is taking me twice as long, but I'm also kind of tinkering with how this works. I mean, you can even see my windshield. I still need to don't need to wipe it. This is almost like surreal here. Like this isn't something I should be allowed to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like it feels feels like I'm rewriting the rules here as we're messing with messing with dry ice. It's crazy. So I think the practicality of washing, like this isn't saving me any time, I don't think, unless I just wanted a really superficial cleaning. But I think for like keeping things really well maintained, I think this could be awesome to have. I know, it, I know it'll be awesome to have. You know, like cracks and crevices and... Swap sides, let me turn this darn light off. You know what I really am looking forward to? I want to pull the carpets out. Clean that. I feel like I kicked my, did I kick the breaker for my air, con air compressor or something? Oh, there it goes. So see, it's taking the superficial dust off. It's not taking like the, I don't know what it's doing. Like the little water spots there, it doesn't mess with those. Let's try cleaning our floor mats. Something's not right. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Let's give it a few minutes to chill out there. I think it's, uh, cause it's not, it normally doesn't freeze up a carpet like that. So I've got too much water going on. See that? Well, let's see, let's do our little wipe test here. Because we're still gonna have to probably water this, do a quick waterless wipe down. But the nice thing about, since we have 
done such a big bulk of the cleanings. Again, I don't think this is practical for like regular washing. Yeah, see, it doesn't feel clean at all. Yeah, that didn't do squat. <laughs> so, now that's sap. No wonder why that won't come off. So, we're going to need to do a normal cleaning process with some M914. Let's try this. Let's try this off. Uh, a little solo bottle. So this is diluted 128 to 1. So I can feel all the crunchy on the surface. The car looks clean, but it's not. And so it's removed most of like the regular surface dirt, but the embedded stuff, because you, know, you don't want to take the dry ice machine and really you know, knock off a PPF. But let's see if this process works. Talking about getting real, real high tech here. So that dry ice part was worthless, but it was fun to try. So if you're looking for a nice superficial clean, sure, but I'm looking for a real clean. So, I think the moral of the story here is I'm going to use the dry ice periodically to clean out like cracks and crevices and things like that. To keep my car, like all this stuff around the, like all the edges and areas where you just don't get when you're washing. Like around the edges of like lights and things like that. So if I did that to each car. You know, once a, once every three washes or or four washes, I think it could be really beneficial to have. The main reason to have the dry ice is for the detailing aspect of things, getting polished residue out. Yeah, there's some kind of sap or something on there. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to get the Torex out in a second. Kind of cleaning up your plastic trim. I feel like my trim has a new level of, don't you think it looks a little darker? I think it does, a little richer looking. But I, this car was dirty enough that I didn't feel comfortable doing a waterless wash on it. I mean, you could still do it, but the dry ice made it at least man more manageable to do this process. So this is 10 times harder than just washing the car, all right? <laughs> 10 times the work, but that's fun to try. 10 times the work and 100 times the cost. But we got a little bit deeper, different type of clean than we normally get. I just don't think, we'll have to do, do this more, but I don't think, you know, some of the things I was thinking about, well, I guess, think about if you had like caked on salt and dirt and grime and stuff like that. My, my buddies at the uh, Kotawari Collective are probably going to get a machine. So they'll test it out and let me know. You know could this be a, a nice addition to what you're doing? Like, like let's say you were doing, you know, cleaning. Did I spray this whole side down? Yeah. If you were, well, I guess I did get that sap off. If you, you know, if you're in the north, they're in Toronto. And so could you dry ice clean in the air conditioning or in the heat? Is that something you could do? Yeah, this is freaking 10 times harder. Whatever bugs I had though, came right off. That's why I continue to argue. You don't need a bug remover, you just need a coating 
What do you need a bug remover for? A bug should come right off with a little tiny bit of water. You don't need any more caustic chemicals. So I think it's safe to say, Mike, we got what we needed on this video. We know what we got. We've got an extra step <laughs> in the process that's really unnecessary, but we've got something to do some deep cleaning. And we'll keep refining this. So let's make this a real juicy title, you know, uh, uh, wash, quote, quote, the car with dry ice. You know, something, something cool with a real, yeah. Yeah, with a, yeah, the question mark car behind it. What car did I get? You know, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to finish washing the car the old fashioned way. <laughs> but uh, that's fun to try out. See you on the next one. We'll keep you up to date on the dry ice stuff.